Hello, fellow tappers. It's a little offer here, and today I'm coming back for a pretty awesome video because I'm going to be going through the ultimate guide to Ice Age Village. Yes, and so basically, the reason why I'm making this guide is because there's been no guide on YouTube that has shown a complete guide to the game. There's been a lot of incomplete guides out there, maybe how to get rich in coins or rich in acorns, but really it's either hacks or it's not really thoroughly explained for for players. So what I'm here to do is to go through the ins and outs of all the important parts of the game to help everybody master it. So here we go. So let's get started with the first so the first section of this guide is how to get rich in coins yes and so as you start the game you will be absolutely bombarded with goals and these goals are the main way of progressing through the game and they do become less and less important as you do reach the higher levels but they still form a significant part of your development because Overall, when you complete the quest, you will spend less coins than the rewards that you'll get from the quests, which will then allow you to de develop in the game faster and give you experience and allow you to level up. So it's really key that you do focus on these quests. And don't worry, it's not just going to be quests. There's going to be a lot of other methods as well. So... Yes, completing families is a very big one. And so even though it is quite a bit of trouble to complete your families, you've got to have two babies, both of which you've got to wait until they hatch. But it is really, really important that you do make the effort to try and complete your families. And that is because you're going to get an absolutely tremendous increase in your coins that you earn. And yeah, for the, the for the price of having the babies and the initial cost of getting the companions and the babies, once the family is complete, you'll see in this picture, um, in this normal family, you get another 6,500 coins and that is massive. And imagine if you have a boost like that on all your families on top of the the coins that they already earn, it is huge, absolutely huge. Yes. Okay, and so also, linked to the families, here we are. So, this is an image of my village, which I've started. And so, a massive, massively important thing is the use of decorations in the game. And decorations, basically, I mean, the game does explain this to you. They give a bonus to the coins that your families will earn and so i've got a list of the highest earning decorations here so we've got um the palm tree which is for, for 10 hearts it gives you a 15 percent bonus for just one tile and th this is very very good for a bonus and 10 hearts are really easy to collect and the hearts you can easily collect from visiting your friends' villages, and I will come on to visiting friends' villages later. Um, Rudy, um, for 10 acorns, it gives, does give a 30% bonus, and that is just one tile. But, obviously, it is 10 acorns. So, um, I would avoid um, getting Rudy, unless you've just got acorns to burn. But, I mean, you always, you always should have acorns to spend on something. So, yeah, definitely, I wouldn't advise getting Rudy. But the best one, really, if if you get to the stage where you're rich in coins, then the best one is got to be the snow turkey, which is the most effective decoration for coins. 100,000 coins for a 12% bonus and a, just a one tile. And so also, they're the most effective ones. Um, the most effective way of maximising your earnings is putting the highest percentage boost decorations near your highest earning animals and so you can see here are my beginner animals like the sloth at the top and I don't have any decorations around the beaky birdie and the sloth but 
Um, as you can see, my higher earning animals, so we've got the the mammoth family, the vulture family, so families that require you to progress more in the game, have got a lot of decorations around them. And so this gives an absolutely insane boost on top of the already the boost that you're getting already from completing the family. But here I've got about nine palm trees and I've got all the ice blocks. So I'm going to be just doubling the coins just by doing this. And and if I can do that, that will also affect the other families around it. And so there's many different ways of using these decorations in the game. And you can actually, the most effective way, if you've got the coins, is by buying singular decorations. I did mention the snow turkey, which is the most effective one for coins. Wouldn't advise buying decorations for acorns, really. There shouldn't really be a point where you need to. But making sure that you position the higher earning decorations near the higher earning families when you collect from them is really important. And so you can maximise your earnings. And honestly, if you do this every with your animals in your village, you're going to be rich in coins. So also moving on. So that really is um, for the beginner level. But let's see. So moving on. So we've got mud bath farming. And now this is a technique used for higher level players. And this is where, where the, the player will buy an insane amount of mud farms, mud baths, and then use the frenzies to collect from them. And so the frenzies, I will just show you, you want to be getting the frenzy jumbo pack for 30 acorns. Yes, and it is definitely worth spending the acorns on as you can use a frenzy 150 times. And you get an absolutely insane bonus when you collect from these mud baths and yeah and you do want to be waiting until you're a higher level to do this maybe once you're above level 25 because that at that point you'd have a lot of land in your village for this method and you'd also be able to make your farm big enough to make the farming efficient and spending all those acorns on the farming to allow you to get rich in coins and at these mud baths Honestly, if you do this and you get the frenzies and you get to this level, you can make coins very, very quickly. So yes, I would highly recommend you using this method. And so I'm going to be very back. briefly going back to my point on decorations. And that is there's something that I did miss out that's quite important because you do get given free decorations such as um, scrat and ice or the trees. And I just want to say. Don't sell your decorations because you have enough land in the game to use your decorations. And even if the decorations such as the trees only give a small bonus of one or two percent, it is still worth having them next to perhaps a, a lower income family because at the end of the day, it's all extra income. And whether it's just a really, really small difference, just having that tree place could be the difference between a few thousand few thousand coins. And if and if you have hundreds of families, the bonuses add up to absolutely tons. See, I just want to say that. And, also, and so when you do get new decorations, then, yeah, it's definitely worth doing that. And, yeah, using decorations like over here, the UFO in ice and that those decorations have really high percentage. So do prioritize the decorations with higher percentage, like I mentioned closer to those animals and it's really important that you get this right and this is why I'm going over it again because this has a significant impact on the the rate that you progress in the game and also I just wanted to focus on the rocks and there are other decorations that use up loads of land but give a really small bonus and these you should put near your low income families instead of your high income families and the high income families you want the one by one decorations with a high bonus yes yeah, so that is the difference 
Uh, so there you go. I hope I cleared that all up. And also there's one little thing that I missed in in the video, and that is collections. And so linking to completing families that I mentioned at the start of the video, these families, when you complete them, allow you to complete the collections. And when you complete the collections, you can earn more animals and get money and more acorns. So yeah, that just adds to the importance of completing the families. And yeah, I just did want to share that little bit that I did miss out. So moving on to the next point. The next tip is basically going to be how to earn an absolute ton of acorns. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be giving a long list of all the different ways that you can earn acorns so that you can be getting the premium families completed and have an awesome village. And so the first one is to clear up your snow piles. And so these snow piles, um, most of the time you are going to get coins from them. But if you do clear them up, you will experience, you will, you will find acorns once you've cleared them. And also the mammoth coins, um, which you can use on Scrat's minigame and Sid's eggs, Sid's eggs Rescue. Yes, and I will come onto those mini games in a little bit. And also in the dino world, you can actually clear up leaf piles as well. So this that, that is important to consider. And that is a reason why, really, in terms of spending your acorns, you want to unlock dino world as soon as possible, because as soon as you unlock it, you'll have access to leaf piles, which is going to give you more acorns. And if you get it as soon as possible and you can maximise the amount of leaf piles that you can collect from and you can get all the coins and all the acorns as soon as you unlock it. So, yeah, the quicker you do so um, when you unlock it as you progress through the game, you yeah, you're definitely going to feel the benefit of adding those quickly. And so the next one is going to be from visiting friends. The next method is visiting friends. And so, yeah, in terms, there's two effects that friends have. And I must mention this. One is that they they can help you to earn a load of coins um, aside from these other methods. Those other methods are, are, are very, they're very more effective than visiting friends for coins. But when you're starting the game, visiting friends are going to be really effective for coins and acorn earning and heart earning. And so, yeah, visiting your friends, you can obviously catch Scrat. So Scrat is going to appear in every village once every 24 hours. And so when you catch Scrat, if you catch Scrat before it gives you a prompt, you can earn extra coins. And sometimes you can even earn an acorn by catching Scrat. So that's another benefit. And also you can collect hearts and those hearts you can use to spend on decorations, which you're really going to need to give um, the, the percentage boost to your habitats and your animals. And you can also send the gifts as well to your friends. And when you send your gift to your friend, you will get a gift back and you will have a chance of getting a heart or an acorn. And so, yeah, that's another main method. And so um, some more points on that. And so you should never, you should never speed up either. So say if you've got an egg incubator, you should never speed up the eggs or if you've, um, if the if the animal has gotten away and you haven't been on the game for a few days, don't use your acorns on saving the eggs or buying land because acorns are premium currency and it's a shame to waste your acorns on that. I'd say the one exception though is for the daily missions because if you've got a high streak on your daily challenges and there's a load of cool prizes on the way, I feel like the, the for the sake of a few acorns, um, the lot and the long term benefit that you will you will get from logging in, then yeah, it's definitely worth using your acorns to maintain that streak. However, if you feel like you're not gonna log be able to log on and keep the streak going for for a very long amount of time, then it's not worth 
using those acorns. And so um, the next thing, so obviously it is worth spending your acorns on the nursery. And so, yeah, you can actually unlock two more nests um, apart from the first free nest that you get. So the second one, which I've actually unlocked here for 49 acorns and the third one for 99 acorns. And both of these are really worth worth getting, in my opinion, as it can massively increase your development speed of your village. And yeah, they're not they're not too hard to get. And once you have them, you can incubate loads of different babies for all the different species at the same time. However, I must note that you can't incubate two two babies of the same species at the same time. That is something to note. But it is really well worth doing, as you can imagine that it's going to basically double the the speed that you can complete families and completing families is more money more coins even sorry so yeah that is um definitely gonna be good and then another way to spend your acorns is gonna be on event event animals yes and so this is really what the really good stuff that you want to be spending your acorns on after the frenzies and things and where, yeah, you would have developed in the game. And yeah, you can get these limited time characters like the Cherry Blossom Elk and the Summersaurus. And these don't return very often. And they do return at r random times and not for very long. So do keep your eyes out for those ones. And so it's always worth having the, your acorn saved because you can get characters like the Raccoon any time. But these characters like the animals such as the cherry blossom milk and the summersaurus do return um not very often at all and might not return again so you do want to be particularly saving your acorns up for these animals after obviously you've collected the the nests and others and also what i must mention is that you don't really want to be spending your your acorns on the regular premium premium animals like the raccoon and the dodo bird because you might as well use your acorns on these limited time animals because you can't unlock them through mini games like the, the SIDS, SIDS egg rescue or kung fu scrap and that is the only way you can get these however you can get the the non-premium ones such as the green bird the pink ostrich through kung fu scrap mini game so you really want to be saving your acorns for the limited time animals and and then you can unlock the normal premiums by playing the SIDS as Rescue and Kung Fu Scrap minigame. Exactly. And yes, so I'm now going to be moving on to the Scrap minigame and SIDS Egg Rescue. So I'll be right back. And also, before we move on to the Sidious Rescue and Scratch mini game, you can actually add more friends. So you get the friends like Scratch Nook, all the way to Buck, and all of the other ones like Sid and all these other villages. But you can actually, vi when you visit the new villages, you can add these the other villages as friends. And then the more friends you have, the more friends that you, you can catch scrat in and get all the coins and acorns and all those other functions and then yeah so if you have the maximum amount of friends that you can perform all these functions on every day then you're going to be maximizing the amount of acorns that you can get so yeah i would highly recommend adding as many people as possible as friends and if if you do have access to facebook and can work the function i think it's a bit outdated now but yeah, also that's another way of maximising your friends and earning coins and acorns. So yes, just wanted to add that little one in. So, moving on. So first of all, which is the better one? Is it Scratch Minigame or Sid's Minigame? And the simple answer is Sid's Minigame. Sid's Egg, Sid's Egg Rescue, I should say. But let's focus on what these two minigames have in common. So on both these minigames, the score that you get from, in this case, hitting the piranhas, and in this case, collecting the bubbles, 
um, yeah, they, the the points don't affect the prize that you're going to get when you complete the mini game. And so really, you could just lose the mini game at the start, and it wouldn't make any difference. However, there is a difference with this since Egg Rescue, and you can actually earn acorns within the mini game, so you actually want to try and maximise the amount of acorns that you can get when you play the mini game, as long as obviously that's more acorns to earn. And so in this case, you can't actually earn scratch acorns from scratch mini game. So when you do unlock this mini game at level thirty, then do use all your coins on the mini game so you can maximise the amount of acorns that you can make. Yes. And also when you do have the option to revive Sid as you do play the mini game if you bump into a piranha or bump into one of those pink fish. But don't do that because there's absolutely no point as all you're gonna do is is get a slightly higher score, but there's no real reason because the score doesn't affect the price and doesn't change the probabilities. And there's also a really, really big one that I've missed out on on here. And so it's that these mini games, once you've used the daily coins, you can play for five acorns. And this is not worth it. This is a very, very big thing. And that is something that's called a lot of controversy. So out of a hundred goes on each of these mini games, the average that you get from each mini game is 2.5 acorns. And each time you play the mini game, it costs five acorns. So if you use acorns to play the mini game, you're gonna be at a loss. And so yeah, so don't spend your acorns on these mini games because you're gonna be losing acorns as you play it. And even though you might have a a chance of getting the jackpot is two percent by the way and that's the same on both of them, it is still not worth spending your acorns on them. And your acorns, you should save up for the limited time premium content and the other premium aspects in the game if you've got all the limited time premium content, but that'll take you a long time. Then, yeah, do do focus on, on saving your acorns up because they honestly, the more acorns that you can save, the better the cooler your village is going to be and I mean that is why um, one of the reasons why I'm making this guide and it is something that people do experience problems with and so yeah that's my motivation by making this so there we go so that is going to be all the advice today and that is pretty much everything there is to the game and so I'm sorry if that was pretty wordy and yeah, and I, I hope that it was helpful and you found the guide useful. There you go, everyone. That is going to bring me to the end of this, of this guide. And so, first of all, I just wanted to um, say a little apology because it has been a bit jumbled today. Um, purely because there were a few bits of advice that I did miss out. And I looked back on the video and thought, oh, I really needed to add that in. And so, yeah, I have covered everything now on the game I can assure you I haven't missed out anything else and yeah so that is why it's been a little bit jumbled but I do hope that all the advice has been useful and that you do yeah that you are successful when applying this advice in your own villages and the best of luck to all of you so there we go and so before you go I would really appreciate it if you could check out my LOR for crew membership, because for just £2.99 a month, you can get early access to my videos, member any shout outs and loyalty badges. And, and also, it would be amazing if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and good bye.